What's up, San Antonio? I'm Trevor. It's Buzz. And this is Ken, and you're watching The Scene, the heaviest metal show of all time. What's up, people? And you are in luck because you are going to get to see one of your newest bands, guys. We are talking about Bloodline. What's up? What's up, What's up guys? These, oh, are, man. these are guys that are made up from some, guy, some bands you may have seen, these guys you may have known of. So, guys, introduce yourselves. Frank. It's Juan. Let me be Frank. He's Juan, Frank. Jay, and I'm Roger. Bullhead. All right, guys. We're out from different bands. Right? Yes, y'all are. I mean, I can see the, I can see the underground. I can see the facelifts. Give us a shallow grave. Shallow grave. Give, give us a history. Like, what prompted? Well, you? we were all at a party one night. And we just happened to not be doing nothing and just ran into yeah. each other. Into each other. So happens these guys weren't doing nothing. So we decided, hey, let's get together and put something together. Yeah. Well. yeah. So that's, that's pretty something. much what came out of it. Uh, we went through a bunch of names, tossed up <laughs> a bunch of little papers in a hat and drew out but bloodline, that's what you got. So guys, tell us about the music. I know it's gonna be hard, but give us y'all's take on it. What what are y'all bringing to this to this hard music? Well it is heavy if you wanna call it like that, but you know uh, it's in our blood, so that's what we've got to stick with. But most of our music is written about pretty much reality and anything that has to do with the bloodstream of uh, any kind of living something that breathes polluted we're all air. Mixed breed, so we're all a mixed breed. We're, we're just striving, trying to get back up there, man. Get out in the scene, push our name, basically. How many songs y'all got out there? Do y'all put? Uh, what is y'all set gonna include? How many songs? Are there? Well, right now we're at uh, about eight originals. We play some copies if people demand it, you know, it depends on the show, but uh, right now it's we're pretty much writing our own material. What about an album or an EP? Well, actually we did go into the studio and record a little uh, EP. Keith Cross, Monster Music. Yeah, we know Monster Music, of course, and props all the way. Um, we do plan to uh, go back in for a full blown, but right now we're just going to stick to a little throw out. We're going try to try to pull the Queen's right method. You know? The four song demo throw out. The four song demo clean. We don't want to give them everything all at once. So. <laughs> yeah, we want to get them, but we want to get them too much. Yeah, you don't want to get them fat. If you get them too much, then they're like, nah, Yeah, you don't want to get them fat on that stuff. You just want to get them hungry. Just a little bit of blood life. Just a little bit of blood life. A little taste of blood life. A little taste of blood life. Because we all just blood life. Oh, yeah. They all come from different bands. How does it feel to be this amalgamation? To be this group together? Oh, I'm sorry. Too many syllables. I'm sorry. Oh, no, speaking of six. We knew each other back when we were eating. Well, the vibe is easy. That's the whole thing. We did strive on uh, forming this band without any pressure. You know? that's, that's the main thing. We all came out of bands that you know were real demanding. So our, our thing right now is just take it easy. No pressure. Let's just write music and get it out there. And let people enjoy it as it comes out. That's good. I mean, and so turn it. As got as you know band members maybe not have played together but you know have known each other for a while but you say she just no, share the stage as different bands yeah. you know so it, it's, it's actually it's but it's come pretty easy for y'all yeah. oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Shit. we got we cast on right away we caught chemistry right away. right away man our chemistry clicked real quick right away that's good dude really good. Nice and um in, in in the process of making music you know does someone come up with the lyrics or is it a group process? It's a group process. It's a, it's a group process. process. Yeah. You know, so the whole that's so one thing that we did yeah, so put down on, on the table right away. Together, this process. Everybody's that, gonna have a, a we input. We each have our own input, and we're all so you know, much We got only one guitarist. That's one boy right here. Only Juan. We got one bass. We got one guitar. We got one bass. 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 We just check it out, man. We're going yeah, on right now. They're on actually on right waiting. Now. Yeah, they're waiting on y'all. So, uh, so, so, right here. so okay, before we go right though, do you have a website, MySpace page, or whatever? Yeah, we're, MySpace. We're, we're, we're on there right now. MySpace. Bloodline SA. Slash Bloodline SA. So before they get on, so do we want to thank these guys and make sure y'all support these guys. They're new, but they've been around, so support these guys. You know them. They are Bloodline, and they're going to kick your ass. We're going to see some live shit from these guys. So here we go. Two, three. Yeah, yeah. Fucking go. Check them out. Yeah. 
What's up? This is Rod with the scene, sitting here with the guys from Unearth. Uh, we've got Ken, Buzz, Trevor. The guys from the guys from Mass are here to destroy us once again. Awesome. Um, Mass. 
Austin. Austin, Austin Mass. Austin Mass, exactly. Uh, the album that's out is Three In the Eyes of Fire. Uh, great, great, great album. So tell us a little bit about the motivation as far as is it more internal or more external? Some, some bands are driven more politically. Um, I read a little bit about some of the songs that, that uh, lyric that you wrote, Trevor, and some it's pretty internal. So yeah, this, this record I touched more on uh, you know internal subjects, more more more, more personal. Touch more upon yourself. So, yeah, touch more, <laughs> touch more on myself. This record. Uh, no, it's, it's more of a personal record. Uh, There's a, a bunch of things going on in my life. It was just battling through some demons, and it was my time to, to vent them on paper. And, I get to scream them out every, every night on tour. Awesome, awesome. This, this record's definitely uh, more organic and, and more for us uh, thrash metal. I, I'd like to say it's a modern day thrash metal record, something that a lot of people are not doing nowadays. Musically, we wanted to make it, you know, the heaviest, you know, record we could make. Make it as violent as possible. Definitely comes across like that. Um, the Oncoming Storm is the, the album before this. I have to say that you guys have been so consistently with your sound. I mean, very few guys ever think about doing a totally different, not, I'm not saying a totally different sound, but as far as keeping it metal, but maybe throwing in something a little different, maybe a little bit more radio friendly. Well, we, we didn't expect that from you guys. Yeah, no, nah, like, I don't think that band structured behind that. If we were going to be radio friendly, I thought we would have been radio friendly in 1998 when we decided to play together. And uh, our whole means of playing together was to, you know, write intricate riffs, write good parts that actually uh, sing, I guess, very melodic, you know, like Iron Maiden, whatever, trying to really convey the message by doing that versus by crying about your girlfriend, you know? Right. And, and I think uh, no matter what on earth ends up doing, I can't really say where we're going to go in the future. We always try to, like, we can always write different types of songs, but it always sounds like us. And no matter what we do, you can't really take on earth out of us, you know? So it's like, whether we write a thrash record, I mean, our first record was like very metalcore. It was like before that was even cool to do. And, uh, you know, the next two records were very metal influenced. And this being the most metal end of the spectrum, I think that uh, if we decide to do a different type of record next next time around, it's definitely going to sound like us. But it'll, you know, people are always going to say, oh, it sounds just like on earth. I mean, obviously we have a singer who is very... You know, you can tell when he hits the record who he is, and guitar players that play a certain way. Of course, it's going to sound like us. So we take it to that level. Sometimes I get, a, I think I get a sense of, of more, of a more spiritual, more positive message. Is there something, I guess, background-wise, Trevor, that you have, I mean, lived through or, or raised, or you know? I think I was just raised to just always try to spin things in a, in a, in a positive way. Even though this record is a bunch of, you know, can I say horseshit? Right now. No, no, no. <laughs> You know, happening in, in you know with things around me. I'm, I'm, I'm always trying to spin it just because I'm still here. I still have to live my life. I still have to go on and see tomorrow. So as, as long as I'm still here, I mean, I'm just going to keep fighting through everything. That's just the way I was raised. As far as as far as musically goes, too. Back in when we were playing the Things of Conscience, I think we always wanted to play guitar. As far as me and Buzz and, and have our band sound like how it is now. I mean, fast, aggressive, technical, and like. This record is a lot more like that one versus Oncoming Storm is, is I think, the oddball because it's very, it's set to a metronome and it's very, like, very slick and polished. Right. This record kind of takes us back to when we started, you know, it's, it, there's no click tracks, yeah. no tomfoolery, it's just us playing in a room and then going back and putting the guitars over it and it's just very organic. It's, it's the way we always sound and it's the way we sound live. So why fight that? No, no, absolutely. Have, have you ever thought about taking Stings of, Stings of Conscience and remix and remastering it? Or yeah, no, it's like the, that record is like not only is it like a sound, but it's a time. It's yeah, a like when you hear it, <laughs> yeah, it's like when you hear that, it reminds you of a time, like when you first heard it. Maybe you, you know listen to it for like a month. Yeah. And like over and over again, so it gets stuck in your head, and you remember things that were going on at that time. That's why I'm always skeptical of bands who like take some of their old material and re-record it. Re re yeah, yeah, like a like a like a take a record that's special to me, yeah. like that I grew up on, and then redo it. Like that always kind of scares me away. Except for Overcast, though. I haven't heard like, that. I heard yet. It, I heard the whole record, and it really does it justice. It's I can't I can't believe how. That's the it. thing. When I heard they were doing that, I was like, oh, yeah, like, no, please. please. <laughs> I mean, so the production on those records were, was, you know, wasn't great, but I can't wait to hear them 
at, yeah, I, I was over at Adam's house drinking the night he finished, and it's awesome. It's really good. Is it still real slow and, it's and fucking chunky and so stupid. <laughs> it's stupid heavy. That's how it is. The bass is like the loudest thing in the mix, and it just rips. It's like, it's awesome. It's the way it's overcast shit sound. I can't wait to hear that. Yeah. What if uh, Aftershock got back together? That'd be crazy. That would be a mess. <laughs> that, that will never happen ever in a million years. We played their last show. We didn't even know like who they were. <laughs> yeah, Adam told me that like you know people offered money for them to, to play, and Adam will speak for it. He's like, no one liked us then. Why? Why are we gonna play now? <laughs> He's like, whatever. That you know that band. There was a lot of mixed soldiers in there too. Like, you know, so I think they're ready to bury the past. Just leave it forward. Alone. Yeah. Just keep going forward. Yeah. Um, musically, what were you guys influenced by? I mean. You, Guys have a totally metal sound, obviously. But then I, there's definitely a hardcore influence. Early on, it was like, uh, do you remember the band Undying? No, that North was Carolina. North Carolina. That was one of the early bands who were kind of doing that sound, like like '96, '97, and all that. Yeah. And uh, you know, like I mean, got into that, like you know, Old Cave In, the Overcast, and then like you know, Midway. No, I was never really into Leeway. Talk to Scott Vogel. Yeah, I talk yeah. to Scott Vogel. <laughs> Vogel. Sorry, he loves Leeway. Yeah. <laughs> it just like, you know, Maiden and Crowbar came along. Right and on. Stuff like that. This, this record for me, like, personally, like, Buzz totally hit on the head. Like, back in the day when we first started, like, we were, like, quote unquote, you know, like, mixing things like elements of hardcore, like bands like All War and Crowbar, and Definitely. then Iron Maiden, more traditional stuff. And back then, that was kind of cool for us because no one was really doing that. But, you know, as everyone knows, hardcore is fast. That's yeah. Sick of It All, Judge, Youth of Today, all that shit. Right. All that stuff, all those riffs have kind of fallen out of our, out of our, out of our laps over the years because we. You know, where we, we've our stylistically we've changed, and right. I think this record, for me at least, like there's a lot of uh, you know Megadeth influence. And I, I basically forgot what I liked. I was listening so much to so many different records, and the thing we want to escape with this record, like new records, yeah. and they they're all on a metronome, and they all feel the same. It feels like the same band but different record. You put in every record, and it's like right. this is almost the same, different tones but same drums and same bullshit. So. I really, I really fell in love with like I went back to like when I was like two, nine through thirteen and fourteen, started listening to like Rust in Peace and, and all that stuff like Megadeth, and Anthrax, and Crowbar, yeah. and, and I was just like, wow, I remember what it's like. I, like I love metal. Like yeah. where to go? Megadeth is <laughs> definitely a good place to start. Yeah. How about you, Trevor? Did, what did you listen to? Grew up with uh, you know Anthrax, you know Slayer, Testament, Pantera, stuff like that. You know the, the standard early good thrash metal stuff. And that's kind of what what helped me grow as a vocalist, that, that's what I started singing to. The, the first time I started singing was in, in, I was 12 years old in my bedroom, screaming along with, with, with you know, Chuck Billy. Yeah. That, that's how I learned. I had like a, a six inch go, go, gorilla amp I used to plug a cheap mic into and just scream along with the records. Right. That's how I developed my voice, that's how I started. Tell me you have footage of this. I wish I did, man. <laughs> Do you have pictures? Of these no, I just closed my bedroom door and just cheered up. off. <laughs> I did that too, about six times a day. Didn't you jerk off to like the uh, baseball te stars? Techno bowl. <laughs> yeah. Halftime. <laughs> I think I was eleven or twelve. It's okay. It's okay. okay. Cause, cause I'm in I'm in Danvers and we got we got cable around that time. That's when like the town just got cable and we had these buttons that. Oh, uh, buttons them like this. Like, ugh, you just sit there jerking off with one hand. <laughs> oh, just trying to see one tit in between a bunch of squiggly lines. Yeah, the scramble. It would clear up at least for a second. Yeah, yeah. It was like three something. seconds. If you did it like this about twenty times, like, I was. I was. I was the only kid in my middle school, one huge arm and the other one was just like a week from beating off. Yeah, that's pretty dope. Awesome. <laughs> where do I where do I go from there? I don't know. I have no idea. That's pretty crazy. Another question I want to ask you is, you know, coming from I guess it was the first the first EP you guys did was above the fall of man? Yeah. Okay. Looking at that and looking at this, did you ever think that you would be right here? That you would be going to your doing European tours, um, having kids wear your shirts all over the nation, all over, probably all over Europe. I mean, you guys are pretty much at the forefront of a, a, a metal like explosion. I mean, we've got so many bands out now. 
and we got so many different metal bands that are doing tours and things like that. Oh, big, big, huge tours. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love you, man. Did, did you ever think that you would be here? Because to me, this is tremendous. We just, it is tremendous. We just wanted to play a show with all our war. <laughs> you know, well, I'll tell you, the first, the first, I guess, metal hardcore show I ever saw was All Out War. And I was in my little band, and we got this call from this guy, and he's like, hey, come on out and play this band called All Out War. And there was five kids. Nobody knew who they were, and nobody gave a shit. I didn't know who they were. We went up there, we played our little set, got down, and these angry, pissed off kids wearing, wearing Gore-Tex <laughs> yeah. come in and start slapping people around, and it was just crazy. And that was definitely the turning point for me for, for that whole scene. Oh, yeah. that it just... That opened up my that eyes. That kind of changed our, our opinion on like the breakdown. Like seeing, I thought yeah. that they were probably one of the best. Oh, I think you're right. It. Yes. Like it was so simple yet so heavy. But yeah, as, as far as what you're saying to reiterate what you were saying before, like I I to this day like I always wanted to play a show where like kids knew our lyrics, where yeah. kids like reacted. There was a few years where like we would just play, we never, like we would play, 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 and then it was like 2001. Like where everything, the whole world just like turned upside down, and we became cool in our own state, and and we played out of state, and we played Hellfest 2001, and that right there at that point, oh, was it 2000? Yeah, 2001. 2001. Yeah. I like everything stopped for me. Like at that point, I felt like I achieved everything I ever had to achieve with music, and that was it. And like everything else from this, like meeting Dime, and like touring with all these great bands, oh, yeah. and doing all That's these awesome. festivals, I. I could die happy tomorrow. I just don't like know how it happened, but it's cool. Like that's it's funny because like when kids when, when you put out a record, there's always kids that love the record. And there's always some kids that don't like it, or whatever. And they say, "Oh, I like this record." It uh, doesn't matter. Like we're always the same dudes, and we're just happy to be playing and, and do what we do. And it's just kind of funny how people get so serious about music. It's just music. Like yeah. we made a record, like it, don't whatever, buy it, buy the next one, buy buy the first one again. Yeah. I don't care. Just we're all here to have a good time. We're not here to just fucking. Jerk off and like, yes, look at me on stage, it's so good. With the cable box. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. With the cable box, yeah. With some spice TV going. Just like, you know, people just need to have that fun attitude again and Absolutely. come to shows and enjoy it. Absolutely. I couldn't agree with you. You can't expect to, to tour the world when, when, you, when you start a band. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's just something you, you set small goals and you, you just you just look at the big picture and you look, just want to have fun with it. That's, that's the main thing that you know, we, we start this band to have fun and write music that we liked. And people liked it after a couple of years and it just it's always growing and there's still room to grow there's still a, a, a millions of kids who like metal and just heavy music in general that we can reach that we haven't reached yet yeah. but we're at a great point that we can't complain we're touring the world yeah. events in Japan Australia we've been to Europe a bunch of times it's just, we're touring the US three or four times a year and it's just like a dream come true yeah God. I'm 27 and I don't have a real job amazing <laughs> <laughs> thanks a lot once again man um, thanks, man. thank you the album is In the Eyes of Fire, and it's off a of Metal Blade, and it kicks ass. If you don't have it, you're a fucking homo. Um, this is Rod with the scene. Thank you very much, and metal up your ass.